Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we'll look at another utility attachment put on your ship to allow to jump large distances without needing to have a jump drive attached onto your ship, or well in the case of small block ships, being able to jump in general. Although a little asterisk after that one, because in the upcoming update you will be able to put a jump drive onto a small block ship. And well it won't be as straightforward as you're going to think it's going to be, but no that will be an option in the future. But for current ships now, one of these things that I'm currently standing on will have to do. So this right here is called the Jump Drive Assistant Ring, which is this lovely thing over here. It features two jump drives that allow you to jump up to 4000 kilometers. We've got two connectors top and bottom in the middle of that ring to connect up to. We've got solar panels galore all the way around this thing, so it's able to recharge itself when it's not in use. We've got beacons on here, we've got decoys on here. And well, it does come with a script, the solar alignment script. So when you spawn it in, or once you have jumped it and the time of day has now switched around, it will move itself around without any thrusters. Yes, it is quite an odd thing to actually experience, which we'll see in just a moment, but it will move itself around to make sure it's getting the optimal sunlight to be able to recharge those jump drives up in a very short amount of time. So for a quick demonstration, here we go, bring up this and changing the time of day. And there we go. Once again, there are no thrusters on this. It's purely gyroscope controls. It's very odd when you spawn in for the first time because it starts moving around. You think there might be something wrong, like say there's a rotor, or maybe there's a piston or something that's going absolute haywire in there, spinning it around, going out of control. But no, it's not going out of control. It's all the programmable block and gyroscope spinning it around and getting it all properly lined up. We're just going to let that finish off so you can stop moving before going any further. And that'll do quite nicely. So this is what it's like when standing on top of it, so we can see it's just moving around there. And for a quick little check inside here, so you can see exactly what I was talking about. So finding something I can actually click into, wherever it's gone, that will have to do down here. Here we go. It's so coming inside this. There we go. Having in thrusters. And there we go. We've got nothing going on inside here. It's purely, like I said, gyroscope controls. That's absolutely everything inside here. It's got solar panels, antennas, lights, connectors. And of course our batteries, decoys, and all of that. Anyway, yes, coming all the way back up to here, grabbing hold of the free camera once again. That should do quite nicely. Here we go, all the way around. Pressing F10, finding the form menu. The jump drive assistance ring is 435 large blocks. Using the signals block, warfare 2, degra block number 3, automatons, heavy industry, and degra block number 2, DLC packs. We can see here an almost advertisement-like description where it says needs to make a long jump trip but lack the proper jump drives, a stop at the JDAR unit can solve that. That's what this thing is for, the jump drive assistance ring. Now it's quite hard to read up there, it looks like it's two A's or at least two R's from at least where I'm sitting. Yes, that's just a massive bit of information about it, but it's very self-explanatory with what it does. So giving that thing a thumbs up, move around toward the very front here, here we go. We're going to have a quick look around the outside, then we're going to test out the little ship sitting in the background, or at least was sitting in the background. Now that I've moved the jump drive ring around, I've sort of lost where I put that ship. It should be somewhere around, oh there it is right there, right next to the molten planet from the previous video. But yes, for the jump drive assistance ring, this is what we get for the very front. Now there's one hell of a lot of solar panels on the left, right, and of course behind this thing to make sure it can charge itself up very, very quickly. So if you do need to rapidly jump somewhere, it should be available to do so. In the middle here is your little ring made out of some grey steel blocks, with a little strip of hazard skin on the top and the bottom to act as a bit of decoration to break up all those steel blocks, as well as to hide up all the little internal parts of where your connectors are currently sitting. So with the way the connectors have been set up, you will have to have a quite long ship, a long thin ship. For a small block ship, there won't be too much of an issue. For a large block ship, there could be an issue. But then again, for the very big large block ships, you'll typically have a jump drive already built into it. But no, what you want to do is make sure you can actually fit inside this area, but then that's going to be too much. You may have to resort to maybe a piston system with a connector on the end there, and extend it all the way out, connect it to one of these, to save you from going all the way in the middle, or having to change up the design. Then we're coming all the way up this, looking all the way up. There we go. And of course looking all the way down. And there we are. So yes, those hand skins are away from the steel blocks. We've got a little gap in between them. And of course all the way down there is where our batteries are currently sitting. Anyway, turn off my lights, come around onto the side, here we go. And that's what we've got. So we've got a bunch of columns going up and down. We've got a laser antenna on this side. All the way up here, we've got a compact antenna. One on the top, one on the bottom, same on the opposite side. Then in between our solar panels, we do have a little walkway that we can stand on and we'll pretend to do some work. As well as a little gap that goes all the way down to here to our programmable block. And we can also see the side of our jump drive right there. 
turn around, coming to this section, here we go, another little sneaky hidey hole, so you can kill inside here, say some enemies are approaching you, and you just want to take a bit of cover, and of course we'll get down here, to escape all the way out the bottom. Come around behind this thing, it's going to be largely what we saw at the very front, but this time it is all dark, because the sunlight is on the opposite side, then moving all the way up to here, here we go, so we've got ourselves a beacon, and then got our trust blocks to come all the way up to our trust decoys, then all the way up to there, there's our antennas once again. If we now go and look down at it, there we go. Looks very different from this view, doesn't it? So as we can see our armored panels for our hazard skin, we see where I'm currently standing, all the way across to here, here's the gap between both our solar panel arrays, then in between there we can just about make out our jump drive, the green dots telling us that it's fully charged, down to there is your gyroscope to help spin it around to make sure the solar panels can align itself correctly, then of course there's a compact antennas once again, I don't think I need to go all the way down below this thing, because it's going to be identical to what we just saw. But on the side here, here's our jump drives, one there, one there, so like I said, we'll get 4,000 kilometers on a very light ship, which will be reduced the heavier it is. And on that, that's it for the outside of the jump drive assistance ring, and for what it is and what the types of designs are for, because there's quite a few on the workshop page that have showcased in the past, they are a bloody useful thing to have in your world, because largely like the one you see on your screen, they are just a use, then dump it wherever you jumped. They've got antennas on here so you can always find it. You can easily place down your own little marker to always come back to it. But yes, once you're done with it, you just leave it where it is, forget about it for the rest of your playthrough, or just come back to use it once again. But now for an actual proper demonstration of how to use this thing, and it looks like the solar panels are moving around once again to realign itself to the sunlight. That's not going to matter. We're now just going to fly all the way across to this ship, get inside, and connect it up and jump. So find the doorway, there it is, all the way up to here, and now coming inside, just closing up behind me, and yes, once again, I am survival mode, because it is from the previous video, where I was on the lava planet, so hopping into here, coming all the way around, here we go, now it's time to actually go all the way through this hole. So I chose this ship purely because of the sheer size of it, as you can see there, we're just about big enough to fit into that ring, but it's going to be a little bit dangerous, so you've got to be a bit careful when actually connecting it up, to you in the front camera, here we go, down a little bit, all the way through, back into a third person view, here we go, and then all the way forwards, there we are, now looking at from directly behind there, it's just about big enough to fit inside here, doesn't really give too much wiggle room to maneuver it around, if you have a very sensitive ship, where say the gyroscope controls are a bit too much, it will be very easy to destroy this ring, just by flicking it around, but no, this ship should do quite nicely, now I've just got to realign this, so moving it backwards, Find that connector, there we go, coming all the way down, and moving it back slightly, there we go, ready to connect, pressing number 9, I'm now fully connected up, back into the third person view, here we go, we can now try this thing around if I want to, it's going to be a little bit wonky, because it is going to actively fight me with that script, trying to line itself back to the sunlight, but that does not matter, once we've done this, we simply press G, find that jump choice by typing it right there, and we just go and drag it all the way down, which I've already done. Now I just click jump, there we go, press number 6, we can jump 4,000 kilometers, and away we go. So after 8 seconds, we're now going to jump, high in the HUD, looking away like so, and then about in 3, 2, 1, there we go, a nice big jump. And now all we've got to do now, press number 9, disconnect that, fly away, and away we go once again. And because it's got signals turned on there, oh, I forgot to actually turn them on, but that does not matter, you kind of get what I mean got antennas on there, we'll always be able to find it, we can actually drive away and do our own little thing. And that's all it does. Once again, it works for a small block ship, you just have to connect all the way up to it, drag onto your hotbar and jump, and that's the beauty of these types of attachments. But now, getting rid of this, we're going to do one more little thing before ending this video, because it's very self-explanatory for what it does. What we're going to do, in fact, there it is right there, now it decides to actually show up, there is the beacon, top and bottom now showing us the actual ring and its location, now we're just going to hide them, come all the way over to this part, now we're just going to change the sunlight round once again, so we can actually watch it all move. It's going like so, in fact we've got to actually find where it's gone, here we go, so now we're going to come all the way around, there we are, we're going to look at it like so, hide all of that, press this, come over to the sunlight, and now we're just going to click right there, there we go. And now it's just going to realign itself, in fact that's kind of bad because it was already facing the sunlight right there, but we can see it moving around there, adjusting itself, flipping itself around, there it goes, and this is what's happened when it spawns in, in fact, I'll do that just after this, spawn in a brand new one so you can see what happens exactly when you spawn it in, because it does throw you off by a lot. Like I said at the very start of the video, it looks like it is going a bit wonky because maybe a rotor or a hinge is going haywire. No, moving around. There we go. 
and eventually it will align itself. But while it's doing that, one thing I did forget to do is come into here, actually go up to that connector where it's gone, there it is, and now we're going to find our jump drives, there it is. So as you can see, it will be fully recharged in 5 minutes, and that is once again in survival mode, so that is the solar panels doing all the work there. So we've got a very quick charge rate on this thing, which is jolly good stuff. And anyway, back over to here, this is what it looks like. It's still turning itself all the way around, and it'll eventually get itself all properly lined up, and fully charged. But I'll do one more time. Let's go and just make it do that. There we go. And now it's going to spin around once again. But no, what I was talking about with this, we're going to find it once again. There we go. Copying this, dropping it down, and that's what happened. So that threw me off completely when I spawned it in. I was wondering what was going on. Yes, that is pretty much it for the jump drive assistance ring. It's just a handy thing to have in your blueprints list, because you never know when you might need one of these. So we link to the description below to should download and play around yourself. I highly recommend you do. Once again, it is a very useful thing. There will be links to the skybox I'm currently using as well. And I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.